older generation is to guide um, the younger generation, you know. So it is not truly really like um, leadership must be older, you know. Um, there is a certain amount of energy, vibrancy that is also needed for true leadership. You understand? Like Buhari, for example, the way he has, he doesn't have enough energy to move around Nigeria, the way he moves to Europe and America, and London especially. I don't know what is in that London, but they take care of that man for that. Plenty of people come back, they look like five years younger. Anyway, you know, so I think this is where the older generations have failed the younger generation in Africa, not only in Nigeria, in Africa at large. Because they have instilled this ideology in the minds of young people to value things over human beings. You know, it is a very African phenomenon uh, because it is how our elites are. And as I always tell people that we have to, our issues in Nigeria are also historical. We must understand how we got here to really understand what is going on now. You know, and if you see that many of the elite families in Africa, even in our politics, many of the big political families, big commercial families, business families, you know, are direct descendants of slave traders who even at that time, their ancestors valued European things over their own people, willing to sell people for uh, mirror and gin and all those things. And today, their children are selling us for Rolls Royce and champagne and Gucci and all that. So it's the same mentality. And this is what they project onto society, you know, and... They also create, they weaponize poverty, you know, thereby creating so much scarcity that we have to compete aggressively against one another. You know, even in your office in Sahara TV, I'm sure this cameraman is trying to make sure that he's the best cameraman around. <laughs> you know, because you don't want to be out there. I mean, that's how it is, you know, and we're all competing for so little. You know, and where our humanity has also been removed from, from the equation. You know, so this is where the older generation have failed the younger generation of Africans. You know, and it is so, um, how would I put it? It is so diabolical. The older generation in Africa are now telling the younger generation that it is their duty to fix Nigeria. Whereas we all know that this, every society is a cooperation between the old and the young, a sacred agreement between the generations on the direction that they want their nation to, to go and the quality of life that they want in that nation. You know, young people are nothing but the reflection of society. So if you want to see how your society is, what is going wrong, what is going right, you look at the youth of your country, of your society, and this is how your youth are. That's how you see what is truly going on in your society. But we want to change that reflection into oh youth are a solution no youth young old rich poor everybody is a solution to our society's problems and it is because the older generation the professionals don't want to uh, play their part by sacrificing for the future of the young people they continue to blame the young people for not being active enough how active do you want us to be when you do not create the platforms, you know, that can help us achieve our full potential, you know? So when I say the older generation have betrayed the younger generation of Nigerians, I'll give you an example. Let's say a young man goes to school and studied history, you know, and he comes out of university as a history graduate. Where is, where is his employment? What is he going to do? Where is the investment in... Um, the historical analysis of our country to, to pre preserve the knowledge for the future, you know, where is the investment? You know, you come out of school as a historian, okay, let's okay, say history, well, well. how about a rocket scientist? You go to school and you come out, you learn physics, specialize in building rockets, and you come out in Nigeria, where is the program? Who is investing in the Nigerian uh, space program? or aerodynamic program that you now bring your idea that you will be out on the streets you know betrayed by the very generation that should secure your future you know what are they doing with the money buying rolls royce private jets 
going to give girls in America half a million dollars and they now put their on Instagram. You know? Uh -huh. They are going to do with it. You know, imagine the kind of proposal a young man in Nigeria will have to write to Dangote to receive the kind of money that girl say he gave her. Half a million dollars. You write the proposal, the proposal go high like this. <laughs> So that's the betrayal we're talking about. Nobody invests in legacy here. They invest only in personal development. They develop only that which they own. They do not see all of us as one or all of us being in a single situation together that we must advance together to create. They have to, you know, subjugate us with their wealth and make sure that we are all working for them, not for our country, not for our betterment, not for our future. You have to be working for them or else there's no space for you in the country you know, i think that for me is truly uh where the betrayal li lies you know not really in leading us is that there's no guidance ideas are an intellectual thing ideas come from the field of intellect thought thinking academia so the regression in our leadership class in general can be tied to the regression in our educational sector directly the quality of intellectuals that nigeria has created since the 70s as i said have been created to serve only a certain class you cannot be in a lecturer in nigerian university today and you are teaching uh, anything positive or constructive. Not that they will sack you, but they will just not give you the promotion you need, the grants you need to improve yourself as a professional, to maybe become a professor, to have more clout, to be able to influence students. You understand? So it is only those that teach the same mundane, archaic, washed up ideas that support the status quo you know that are propped up in academia so that is the real reason why leadership is poor in nigeria you know so many of the young people that come out from this educational system are ready to become oppressors themselves they are being trained and are all oppressors in waiting you understand and subconsciously don't get me i'm not saying that they come out like i want to be an oppressor many of them think that they are good people but as I said at a meeting I had last week, it is the good people in Nigeria that they give contracts and they increase the money of the contract. You see, without private connivance, there can be no public uh, corruption. So when government release contract and say, ah, we want to build this bridge, they bring, not government that will build it, they'll bring private contractors, supply this, they'll say the thing is $5,000. A uh, private Nigerian contractor will reach the goal. Say now seventy-five thousand. Him and the politician will agree to share the seventy-five thousand. You understand? Uh, they want to build a uh, public house, public anything. Even when private contractor now get private business, AG your mechanic, the car parts, you know. So it is this spirit in society that they used to hold all of us um, hostage. You know, so it is not truly that Nigeria is regressing, more like Nigerians are held mentally hostage by a very violent class, you know, our business and political elites who refuse to invest or allow, even though they don't invest, if you are trying to do it, they don't allow for the mental development of our people, you know, because they understand that a nation cannot be greater than the consciousness of its people. So as you see Nigeria like this, Nigeria is a manifestation of our collective consciousness. Nigeria cannot be greater than how Nigerians think. You understand what I'm saying? So they deliberately, they spend billions on distracting us. Billions of nonsense to show you on Insta blog, carry you on this uh, 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 MTV trace, all these things they put in your face every weekend, different bang, boom, bang, just to make sure that you do not think above these mundane things that they used to hold us all hostage you know and you know the evidence of that you know is that nigerian elites spend more 
on entertainment than they do on education. So the Nigerian elite, instead of investing for our public education to be great, or you know, donate money to our universities, rather donate it to an artist. You understand what I'm saying? Donate it, you know, to Big Brother Nigeria, you know, or things like that. You know, that is to sh to make you feel, you know, like oh, if you do like this, then don't worry. One day it will be instead of us to them to donate to that which they don't control and everybody can benefit. If you truly want to progress in your have progress in your life, all over the world, their societies were built by their elites who understood what legacy meant. You know, and it is this lack of investment in our mental development that creates the kind of society that allows the kind of leadership we have. It is not a regression. Understand? Uh, what are we regressing from? From Abbasanjo to Abbasanjo. Is that a regression? It's not a regression now. It is stagnation. It is not really a regression. There's regression in our economic existence as citizens that we, that we can't end more. But it's still due to the fact that these same people refuse <laughs> to invest in our development. You understand? So there's no regression from Buari to Buari. I mean, it is stagnation in terms of ideas, in terms of yeah, how we, what we think is important in the country, you know. Okay. I mean, Dangote's refinery is $19 billion. That's what he used to build it. $19 billion to, to uh, refine only 600 and it is something thousand. Uh, barrels per day. 19 billion dollars. <laughs>It's not an opportunity for us to get it right. Don't start. You see, this is another thing. Nigerians like miracle. There's no miracle that can fix Nigeria in 2023 or get it. You are beginning. We can begin to start the process of fixing our country in 2023. That's the best we can say we want to achieve in 2023. That we can begin to weaken the powers of the oppressors, to separate them from the state. You know, as I said, they've held us hostage in economic terms. We call it state capture when a few group of individuals corner the entire power of the state and the resources and use it for only their own benefit, you know. So that's state capture. So if we can free our state from the grasp of these people, it is the beginning of maybe freeing our resources and our um, and the machinery of state to benefit the majority of people. So we can start this process, you know, in 2023. But let's not see Nigerians can... No, no, no. I mean, I've said this many times. I'm not really. First of all, I'm not cut out for public office. You know, I'm. Um, I mean, I'm more of a party man. So, my aim and ambition in politics is to be the chairman of the ruling party. You know, and that should be MOP one day. You know, soon in this world. You know, so and that's what we are working towards. Uh, I believe that one of the reasons our politics in Nigeria is not really strong. It's because our parties are not stronger than the politicians that they put in the office. And that is because every prominent, powerful person in the political party is a political office holder. And it shouldn't be so. I think the strongest people in the party should be in the party, not in office, so that they can exert influence over the politicians in office to be able to toe the line that the people have put them there for. You know, I mean, we have a situation where even in Lagos State Assembly, somebody won PDP and changed to UPC in the uh, Lagos State Assembly here. And I mean, so those kind of things. I don't. I'm not saying PC or PDP had pro people mandate to, but whatever mandate they've given you in the party that put you there, you can't just take it to. You know all these kind of moves that taint our election, our party, our party politics in Nigeria is childish. We need a mature pro-people's party that represents the true interest of the people and can exert influence over the political office office holders you know i think that is where me i want to exert my energies and ideas in creating policies and finding the right politicians you know, because nigerians don't we know president that, that is going to save this country it is only the people of nigeria that can save nigeria and that is by them participating organizing 
and making sure that they put people that represent them in all the offices available, not only in presidency. Oh, as I've said, I mean, the most important tenant of MOP is the restructuring of the relationship between Nigerian citizens, Nigerian resources, and the Nigerian elites. We must restructure that relationship. You know, uh, there's an imbalance, you know, because Nigeria itself, you know, British people did not sit down in England and decide to create Nigeria for the benefit of the people that are here. You know, the reason they created this place was to exploit the labor of the people here and extract its resources for their own development. And hundred and almost 200 years now after the fact, by 160 years now after the fact, because our 1860, we entered under colon colonial rule in, in Nigeria before they amalgamated in 1914, but this whole area, Nigeria, Niger area, you know, we, we must change, we must change, you know, that about Nigeria, you see. Everybody else that have been in power here has pledged to their imperialist masters to maintain the status quo, to continue to exploit our labor, 30,000 a month minimum wage, and they're saying it's hard to pay. You understand? 30,000 naira a month minimum wage in a country where somebody is saying they have billions of dollars. It's ridiculous. You know, 20 years of democracy, no single public housing project. Three years into a pandemic, the federal government, state government, no government has launched a new hospital for the people of this country not no single new hospital building has gone up but in their own lives every year they are building 10 houses all buying houses all over the world buying girlfriend house going to the best hospital they own hospitals by themselves that the people cannot afford to use you know so this relationship this creation this entity that is nigeria we the machine we must change its nature this is a, this is the fundament. This are, these are the fundamental core of the existence of the movement of the people. Is to awaken the people from the distractions of the elites into a conscious existence that makes them observe their own reality, right? Because you can't be jumping up and down and praying you want to be like the person that is oppressing you. That means there's something not balanced in the way you are seeing your reality. You know, and it comes from, you know, because I tell you, you go to school, primary to secondary school in Nigeria, you know, you hear the word injustice in your classroom. You never hear oppression, police brutality, but you go outside and it will, it will be happening to you. But this is not the answer to any question in your exam. So the system itself negates your reality. And for some reason, it has convinced you to also negate that reality, to face the distraction. Well, yeah, it's definitely tied to our educational system, uh, you know, because, you know, the reason why many of the giants of Pan-Africanism are in terms of the theoretical, not that we don't have giants from Africa, are mostly our cousins in the diaspora, is because you know the enslaved could see that oh, I am in a white school. This is a white school. This white man enslaved me. This is his education. We need African education to counter. So they always had African schools in the weekends, Pan African schools to give them the true information that is not the imperialist information. But you see, we decolonized. They play the intelligent trick on us. You know, uh, our school has black teachers, black owners, you know, our government is black. So you go inside the school, you are not thinking this is a white school. You know, you're telling you Mungu Park discovered River Niger as if uh, all the African people that were bathing in the river 
before he got there. They don't know what the river was. <laughs> if we would have helped him chart the river, I took him, I showed him where he meant river Benue, I showed him everything. They didn't know it was a river. You know, tell you, Mary Stressor, stop the killing of twins. He can... First of all, I'm Yoruba. Why the hell are you telling me about what they did in Calabar? And really, really, uh, is this true? Like, can we investigate and see the truth? How did they start killing twins? Anyway. So our education is so white, you know. Uh, we sit down in classrooms, learning British history and all of that. And Nigerian history start from October 1, 1960, we get independence. Our family are lower, and I'm the way, first uh, prime minister. You know, this first, first, our history is all about first, first blacks, you know. First black, first black to do this. First, so even my grandmother's struggle is uh, reduced to students as the first woman to drive a car. That is the idea of a female empowerment in our education a black female empowerment black first black woman to drive a car as if that was anything that was nothing she I, I didn't think that was part of her accomplishment in her life when she was alive thinking well oh, i'm the first woman to drive a car in nigeria i mean you know so we as africans it now becomes a race the first you have to be first something to 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 be recognized in history you know that what you did for african people matters you know, what is your role in our independence? Why did we get this independence? What was happening before this independence? You understand? So our education prepares us, you know, for our lack of understanding of ourselves that manifests itself in what you have said as ignorance. You understand? Because we are not truly uh, interested we are not told that knowing about ourselves is interesting or is necessary. Yes, and I, they gave me a gift of all these diaries, all these of uh, uh, corporate diaries. You know, when I was young, I opened those things. You will see Nkrumah, all those things. They were trying to teach you about Africa. But today I was the richest person, richest ten richest pastor, the richest uh, most expensive car. But that's because it's deliberate. It's deliberate. You understand? So we as the people that want to, we as the moment of the people who understand that we must have a mass educational program, you know, at least a political, to politicize the people to a certain extent, to point out the contradictions within themselves and also within society, you know. As Toklika Michael, okay, sorry, let me call him his, his dying name, Kwame Ture, our great ancestor said, he said, it is not the job of the conscious to make the unconscious conscious. Mm -mm. It is his job, it is the job of the conscious to show the unconscious, right? The unconscious things they are doing because everybody wants to be free. We know we want to be free. So if you know you want to be free, my job is to say, yeah, you say you want to be free. You say you don't like this country, but look at what you are doing that is adding to the, this thing you are doing, what do you think is adding to the, once I point out that contradiction, you are truly interested in your freedom. You, as a human being, must begin to improve on that. Improve on your on yourself and see how you can stop those things. To you know, but that relationship has never festered between the Nigerian professionals and the and the poor people of Nigeria. You know, the poor people of Nigeria are under so much economic, social, uh, also now environmental pressure that it's difficult for them to think these thoughts and act on it or deliberate de, de, uh, de, delib, deliberate on it you understand it is we africans that have been able to find some comfort within oppression that has to build this bridge to them and help them together with us to topple our oppressors but the nigerian professionals is completely in alignment with the oppressor you can hear in the news oh 20 children died in one hospital today because of lack of medicine whatever it won't stop the Nigerian uh, professional from going to work tomorrow. 1,000 children die, he doesn't care. He'll go to work for the oppression tomorrow. It's not enough for him to strike. Oh, these schools have closed for nine months. Students cannot, poor people, students cannot, their children are in England, are in private universities. So I'm going to work tomorrow to make sure I can pay that school fees. Instead of us to fight for public schools to be up to standard, so we're not under that pressure. All of them are borrowing money. They are living in debt to pay fees to the same person that is employing. Because you have to see it that way. You have to see the elite as one individual. We all work for this individual. You understand? During slave times, I always give this analysis to people I'm teaching, you know, when we're doing our educational programs. 
that during slave time it was the slave master's job to provide health care, housing, clothing, entertainment, and food for his slave, or his slave cannot walk. Then they devise a plan where now the slave master, who is your employer basically, he is now the owner of the hospital, the school, the food, the clothes, and the entertainment that you say you enjoy, and pays you less than he charges for those things. And says you are free. So you go and work for him to pay him back. And now be in debt and you borrow from him again to be able to supplement your existence, which he knows deliberately 30,000 naira a month. Do you know school fees in a good school? Million naira at least. So how much is bank manager's salary? You have three children, each one. School fees 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. Your house rent, three point something, four M. You need car, your wife needs car. You know it's not your salary. You must join the game. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, we, in our correspondence with INEX so far, um, what, we, what we are trying to do is build movement of the people as a movement of the people. I think nobody can stop the people. As uh, Del Jones said, when the people are coming, when the people rise up, it's either you rise up with them or you get the out of their way. Because there's no stopping the people. So we feel that if we do what we need to do right as an organization, meeting their so-called elitist standards that they've used to fix Nigerian uh, politics, and we strive to meet it with the help of the people. And I have to say at this point that Nigerians have shown me even more than I expected in terms of support. You know, uh, we thank you from the MOP, truly from the bottom of our hearts, all the donations that have been coming in has surpassed what we even expected. And if we can meet all these things and register our party, yeah, we are on. I mean, so there's no, we are not afraid of the machinations of the elites of Nigeria, you know, because this is democracy. And Nigeria is multi-party democracy. Until they can change that, the people must find their own way to, you know, as peacefully as possible bring about our, our change. Not because we are afraid of blood, afraid of bloodshed. No, but because African people have shed enough blood, we must find the most peaceful ways for us to achieve what we want to achieve. Not because we are afraid, but because we respect the sanctity of African lives. And we know that our oppressors don't. So, unless we must, eh, they call Daru again, say no more election. Eh, eh, we can now say, okay, let everybody go to the bush. Eh, Abi? Okay, everybody to the bush. <laughs> but until then, you know, for the sake of our ancestors and, our, and the future of African children, we don't want to really write our history in blood. You know, the Europeans have written it in the north of their blood. Our oppressors have written it in the north of our blood. Three million dead during the civil war. What for? How many Nigerians die every day today? What for? For what? You know, even if there was this grand program going on, like China, you know, uh, that something grand. And I wonder, okay, well, maybe these people are brutal because of this, they are achieved, they have to achieve. What for nothing? For the most hedonistic of things, full, uh, expensive, uh, gourmet food from Thailand and India and bringing chefs from Brazil and England and eating, driving the best car and flying in plane. I mean, the most basic of imagination. The same thing you think when you are in high school. When they ask you at the high school, what do you want to do when you grow up? to have money, build house, buy car, buy plane. All the girls in Lagos. 60-year-old men are doing the same thing. Like, they don't have ambition to create you know, to compete with the world. That's the truth. And that is their real uh, oath with the imperialists. That they've handed over power to them, but they must make sure that Africa never competes with the world. The Africa never has a vision that is in competition with the world. But Africa must compete with itself. Mm -hmm. So they, they, uh, their cement is not competing in the world stage. They are, nobody sent them there. It's only within Africa, oppressing, chancing. They are oil companies are not like shared. They are not going to drill in other countries all over the world. They are not going to explore, you know. They just here in Nigeria taking, taking, taking. There's no, they, they don't have no, they don't have a global ambition, you know. They are local champions.
you know, they have no global ambition. And for that reason, we are the uh, uh, victims. But we must shed our victim mentality. And that's what I tell people. You must shed your victim mentality. As Franz Fanon said, the day you decide to become the enemy of your oppressor is the day you stop being his victim. We must decide, we must make up our mind. Forget, it can, it can never be you. The contract will not come to you. I mean, out of, you know, and this is why they always promote anybody to give this their change to. Out of the, uh, CBN itself talks, say, only uh, 500, 2% uh, of Nigerians have 500,000 in their account at any time. So, forget all this show. <laughs> My own account now go is like less than 500, so I don't know if it's 2%. So only 2% of Nigerians have 500,000 or more in their accounts. So what are we doing? You know? So let's, let's be wise. Let's be wise and understand that it is better for us to have something good for everybody than to worship people that are taking everything for only themselves. You know? Thank you very much. and the problem of the political class. It is said that the people deserve the kind of leadership they get based on their own character and behavior. Absolutely. So, so really, um, the crop of uh, the political elites that we have is born out of... Uh, it's a direct translation of the kind of society. But we have the quality of leadership that Nigeria needs. I'm not talking about uh, what we get. I'm talking about that Nigeria, do we have it in a present political class? We do, we have. And you see, my other brother, the lawyer, joining us via Zoom, said it earlier, that even good people sometimes come in and they become bad. It's because of the system, the society itself. This is the only country where today, if Linus is appointed in a position, people should celebrate him after his tenure. But you will find the very day he comes in, his school, um, maybe his alumni, his village people, his friends will start coming to visit him, to congratulate him. Some will even throw parties for him. People should be celebrated after serving their term so that we can be able to you know, judge them based on what they've done. So, I mean, because if you look at the problems of, I mean, you, you are saying that we are not in short demand of quality leadership. We are not at all. Why has the solution to our problems eluded us with like, the kind of leadership that we have? Like I said again, the society is to be held responsible. The same Nigerians, we, the same Nigerians we live the here. The innocent Nigerians who no, no, no. go to vote, <laughs> how do you hold them? They how are do not, you blame them for they the are kind not of that leadership? innocent. We must be able to hold ourselves accountable. We, it is time we start holding people accountable, ask questions for people will promote or will sponsor to certain positions. All right. Mr. Salu, just a moment. There's someone who is very experienced. Uh, we're due for breaking another uh, 48, uh, another uh, two minutes or thereabout. There's someone who is very experienced in the process of election and all of that. And because of this conversation, I had to bring him on the program so he can give us an idea. Is Mr. Uluwale Osazi Uzi. He's a retired director at INEC. Um, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Osazi Uzi, for joining us tonight. But well, let's take the breather that we needed at this moment. And when we come back, uh, I can see you, but it does look like the audio is, uh, is not as, uh, as we, we hope that it will be. But hopefully, when we come back from this break, it will be better. It's setting the agenda for 2023. That is our task for tonight. Our panel is still on tonight. And perhaps, if you are sitting at home, and Mr. Salih's blame is on you, you probably need to listen uh, on the other panelists and see where we needed to head ahead of 2023, what we need to fix, and the way to go. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone. Let's uh, get back to the conversation on setting agenda for 2023 on the quality of leadership that Nigeria needs. 
going forward. I've been speaking with a senior lawyer and rights activist, Mr. Dele Farotimi, who has been talking with us uh, from Lagos virtually. We also have Mr. Lino Zokori, a leadership development expert, as well as Mr. Salehu Mohamed here, who is a chieftain of the APC, Mustafa, sorry, and also Mr. Oluwale Osazi Uzi, is a former director of publicity with INEC. Uh, we were trying to uh, uh, get connection with you. I don't know if that uh, is okay now and if we can hear you. Mr. Oluwale Ozazuzi, thank you so much for joining us. I was going to ask, I was asking you before one on that break about the process on the ground and whether or not the electoral process can also be blamed or is there anything different from what we saw in 2019 uh, that is different from 2023 or any kind of inhibition that the system provides that can hinder us having a quality leadership in Nigeria? Thank you very much for having me. I hope you can hear Well, the issue really yeah, please is go ahead. the law... The law has provided a very low uh, level of qualification for uh, um, contesting most of these offices. The president of Nigeria, for example, as long as you are aged in Nigeria, doing my best. Apologies for the bad quality of the audio there from the connection with Mr. Oluwali Osazu, who's here. I've been expecting and I'm so anxious for the kind of engagement we could expect from Mr. Osazu with his experience working with INEC on the process. If anything improves in that connection, definitely we'll get him back. But let's uh, see go virtual with uh, Mr. Farutim. You heard the interventions of my guests here in our Buja studio. And we're looking for the way forward. I mean, on one hand, is that people need to change their orientation if they want the equality leadership. Mr. Linus Okori also has mentioned as much as talking about some of the criteria that we need to see in the kind of leaders that we need. Um, you talked about the system. How do we go forward in fixing it? Uh, the law, you said, is a major issue too. Um, Mr. Linus, okay, okay, particularly was very idealistic okay. in laying down the parameters of what we need to be looking for in a leader. And that is completely correct in an ideal environment, in an ideal situation, but ours is far from being an ideal situation. He spoke to vision. Unfortunately, the one thing that has never been present in the governance of Nigeria is vision. We've been ruled by base myopic men. Then Halaji Mustafa <laughs> was talking about the incorruptibility of uh, General Buhari. You see, there is this thing about Ali Baba. If Ali Baba is a saint, why are his friends thieves? Inside that cabinet, where General Buhari sits, the incorruptible General Buhari, all around him are people who are, who are under investigation for one stealing or the other. And the stealing under this administration has no part two. We will find out all of that when they have left. But let's talk to the system. It is very difficult to expect the people to be better sometimes than the system that has conditioned them to become what they have. It is easy to turn around and blame the people. But how much information does a man have with which to choose when you have already weaponized ignorance against him? You feed him the news he hears, he hears the lies, he has no access to information. Imagine, for months, in a democracy, the federal government banned Twitter 
And the system enabled it. And there was nothing anybody could do about it. Even if we went to court, and some people did, it made no difference because that is the system. Now, it is very, very easy to focus on maybe if this genius became president of Nigeria or that um, administrative guru. But they cannot move beyond the system with which they have to work. We, as Nigerians, those of us who are busy talking and presuming to know what is best for us, we need to find a way to connect with the people who are now being blamed for the tragedy of leadership in Nigeria. But again, until we, we have, a, there is a restrictive medium here. I'm conscious of the time. I'm conscious of the fact that we have three other people here and two other persons. But let me say this. Until such a time as when we come to the knowledge of the fact that we cannot continue to work in a manner where it is persons who determine what is right and what is wrong, and not an uneven, not an even handed judicial system to which both the rulers and the ruled are subject, we will continue wasting time with this moribund search for a Moses out of our wilderness. We've had, a, I think, quite a number of people have come out. Very few of them, in fact, none of them so far, especially the ones who have held power, political power in Nigeria, will qualify if we were, if we were to use Mr. Okereke's parameters for determining government and presidency or any other role for that matter. We can look to the public records of the persons who have stood up to say they want to be president of Nigeria. Point at one single thing that any one of them has ever done that is visionary or that might be deemed to be visionary, except stealing. And I say that advisedly. I'm not talking, if I'm asked about specific persons, I will speak to specific persons. But there is nobody in the race today who has been in public office or is holding public office that is not tainted with stealing, blatant myopic stealing. When a person is stealing more than they can spend in a hundred lifetimes and they want to be rulers again. And then people are busy running elder skelter and campaigning and they want to be discussed. Exactly what are their pedigrees? What have they done? Mr. What Faratini, if I mean you, you, you talked about the system and I, I presume you're talking about a set of laws. Uh, I may be wrong in my uh, presumption, but if that is the case, how can we decisively fix that? Before, can we do it before the election? How do we go about it? Let me say this to you. I'm talking about laws, but I'm not talking about laws in the sense of uh, the land. I'm not talking about the criminal act or laws of contract. I'm talking about the governance system, the superstructure of governance in Nigeria. I'm talking to the Constitution, Decree 24 of 1999, by which we are being governed. It is a military decree that has no bearing on the desires of vast majorities of Nigerians. That, that Constitution renders the rulers irresponsible because there are no consequences for their actions and inactions. A governor is immune all through the time he's in office. He comes out of office. If he has not offended the powers that be after him, he enjoys perpetual immunity. The people are getting poorer by the day. I like this one. I like the most of I was talking about the difference between 2015 and now. I believe it was Bill Clinton. He said, is the economy stupid? That was what he said. I will say to you today, is the system stupid? All of us, we have been stupid because we are not looking to the real problem. We have to change the constitution. Now, can we do it before the election? Look, when people mean to do the right thing, you don't need forever to achieve it. There is a national assembly. As much as it lacks legitimacy, even though it has the law behind it, it's legal, but it is illegitimate. It's a lawful assembly. But it is not reflective of the will of the people, regardless of what anybody has to say about elections. We did not assent to that constitution. It is far from the thing that we have ever agreed on. Let the 2014 constitutional report, or let the 
air file report which the president himself commissioned. Let it go before the people. Let's debate it. Why are we afraid to talk to ourselves? If we can't talk to ourselves, All right. 200 million people are not going to see it. But there must be a mechanism by which the will and aspirations of the people can be placed before the National Assembly and placed before the people in a plebiscite if the will is there. If the All will right. is not there... Me let me bring him back, uh, Mr. Osase Uzi, who I understand now uh, has joined us on telephone. Thank you, uh, my producer, for getting that done. Uh, let's be able to, to get him uh, in the, in, in the uh, minimum uh, manner in which we can tonight. Mr. Osase Uzi, my, my question was pretty much direct. It's about a system that has been highlighted as one way by which uh, we can get the quality of leadership. And so I was asking you to give us the state of things right now. You and INEC, in 2019, has anything changed compared to now? Can we say that the system is not inhibitive for us getting a quality leadership in Nigeria? Well, thank you for having me. And, uh, sorry for the disruptions. Um, I, in my own personal opinion, I don't think anything is the, the laws we we'll use, we'll use are still the same. The personnel hasn't changed significantly. And um, when you keep doing the same thing, you don't expect any changes uh, from the first time you did them, every other thing being equal. Um, the law, as it stands, the Constitution has a very low threshold for qualification of office. Offices like the uh, chairman of INEC, where it says it has to be a person of unquestionable integrity. But for president of the country, you, all you have to do is meet the age threshold and uh, be educated up to secondary school level. That is all that is uh, required and sponsored by a political party being a Nigerian citizen by birth. Now, that is one of the lowest entry point qualifications for any office. And, and anybody who is told looking for a job will tell you that, that oh, well, I think that will, 990 million Nigerians will qualify if that was a threshold. So the threshold is low. The expectation of the people, and the people must be recruited, the leadership must be recruited from the people available, and the people are ballot is very difficult for some, oh, and yeah. very, very easy for especially those who are part of that. It's so, so difficult to, to now uh, get to hear what you're, um, I was just enjoying uh, his line of conversation. And you, um, uh, let, let me come back to you. Yes. Our agenda tonight is to allow Nigerians to have their minds prepared into making a decision. Our role in China's television mm. is for the people. Absolutely. To get them to do, make the right decision Absolutely. by bringing to the fore this kind of conversation. So tonight, I like you. Uh, he said your, uh, your, your concepts <laughs> were idealistic. I mean, mm. in the ideal situation. Yes. But we are not in the ideal situation as he has presented <laughs> tonight. How do we maneuver? The, the Nigerian people who are watching tonight, how can they maneuver yes. uh, in this kind of on, uh, not, not the ideal, according yes. to him? Sir. In our personal lives, yeah. in a difficult country where we are in, yeah. we come from poverty situation. When we as individuals decide to recreate, reinvent uh, our lives yeah. and give a personal vision for our lives, we succeed. That's we, we move from reality of poverty as individuals. There are many people in this country today, as I'm talking to you, who they have grown out of difficulty to create businesses, to create organizations, to, to succeed, and they are in wealth today. So why are we waiting as a nation until we get to that period where we call ideal? It will never come. In nations that have made progress, some people sacrifice something. It is time for Nigerians to basically lead in their personal lives and say, enough of these things. If the political parties do not throw up quality men of honor and vision, men with capacity, with, who can drive knowledgeable people, who can make things happen in their various roles, who are determined to serve selfless human beings, who don't think about themselves. If Nigerians cannot you know, stand up and fight for themselves, nobody will fight for them. 
And they, my, my decision right now is that my advice to the president is very simple. Let his body language and his person and his entire life give Nigerians a gift. A gift of a free and fair election. The president doesn't have anything to lose anymore. I mean, if he, he will go into retirement, a happy man. If he gives this country a free and fair election, every institution will follow through. The political class should stand up and how, say, how will he do that? it is a very, I mean, the way he's doing it right now, basically, is that the president, you know, has announced the trial system. I won a free and fair election. I've heard that many times, right? Can his foot soldiers think, take that and make it a reality? The institutions, the police, the army, all of these institutions that support systems, the INEC itself, can they ensure that the systems that is already right now working, let it work. Does it, so that, so that, that reassures the people. Do the political parties, as they are framed present, yes. do they look like doing the kind of things that you are thinking about? Are they in that frame? So if the big political parties do not present us men of vision as their political candidates at the highest level, if they do not, if they throw up the same old things that we have seen over time, you know what we're going to do? There's going to be an emergence of leadership from another source. Enough of these things that people think that they look for money. If the candidates are thrown up, they don't even look for the quality of the, the candidates. They say this person has money. If you don't what, have money... What, what has money got to Mr. do with Okori, all of this? In the, idea, in the reality... Uh, uh, presently in Nigeria and the politics yes. of Nigeria, if you don't have money, yes. if you are not within the major political parties, can you win elections? So, so what I'm saying to you, sir, is very simple. I'm saying to you that the power to choose is in the hands of the people right now. But there must be a body language, right, that says we are ready to give a legacy of a free and fair election. It's a gift I am asking for. And when that happens, a lot of, there are a lot of people now in the, in the presidential race there are, there are a lot of them are quality people. I've seen a few, one or two, who are quality people on the ground. Can we say we need prepared people? People who, have, who are committed. They are not thinking about self. They come with a real agenda. They might not have all the money in the world, but guess what? They throw the vision. The, the people who have the, 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 the money can begin to support those candidates. Our business people should stop being selfish right. to support wrong candidates. Some of them should support quality people. And the youth of this country should say, enough of the money they throw at the young people. Everybody should stand up and lead. It, and change this it looks what like what you, have, uh, portray, what you have painted tonight is like you, you are disappointed in the political formation and political class in Nigeria. Uh, it looks like there is a disappointment in the air. Do you feel that maybe you in the political class have disappointed Nigerians for too long? Well, I wouldn't um, accept that assertion. Like I said earlier, and if you go by what he has also said, the people will decide. If the political class or a particular political party has failed, then let the people decide by voting another political party. So for me, my advice would be, the people should take their destiny into their hands by making sure they are able to question and criticize whatever is brought forth to them. It's not just because somebody has money or you believe somebody has, or there's the assumption that he is in party A. And no, the president has always said it. Free and fair election. I mean, are, are you in the political class also challenging yourself? Like Nigerians are challenging themselves that they need quality people. Are you challenging yourself? Definitely, we Beyond are. Beyond the names and the money. Like, take take a case study of my own self now. I'm running for the national chairmanship of my party. It is also a challenge to others because for me, I have told them times and number, it's a call to serve. I'm one of the least um, persons with the governorship, former governor or former senator profile. But I believe it's a race for me to win. I'm coming to do you things. You have the vision, like he, he mentioned. I have far more. In fact, my vision is coming to do things differently by promoting internal democracy. When you do that, you are able to get popular candidates. And when you have popular candidates, you, are, you have reduced the rigorous or the burden of even rigging an election. And when you have popular candidates, that means the person has been able to market himself to the people. That means he must have been able to put forth his vision 
what he intends to do for the people. I want to lead a party or a team of NEC members that will be able to be accountable for the manifesto we present to the All people. Right. It's time for us to go now, I understand. Um, uh, just a, a, a parting shot now. Let me begin with Mr. Dele Farotimi. Your parting shot on the program. Uh, it's a big election year we are looking ahead of us. We are already in the political year leading up to the election year. Um, your parting shot tonight, what you would like to tell Nigerians as a prepare uh, to elect uh, new leaders? I'm of the opinion that Nigerians have only one choice if they are truly interested in change. That choice will only come about when there is a turnaround. That turnaround comes from the Latin word known as revolver, and it's called the revolution. The challenge of the progressive thinkers in Nigeria and those who wish Nigeria well is to ensure that that turnaround comes about without violence and to also be clear in enunciating their vision. Clarify the vision for the people. Let them understand what we mean by a turnaround. Election will come, but a change of personnel will not change anything, and it will not change our